the review of ASPA's Code of Ethics, Developing Personal Professional Ethics in ASPA Members, Group 3. All right, so just to introduce what we're going to be talking about today, uh, as you well know, um, the ASPA Code of Ethics was first established in 1984 and was recently uh, revised in 2013 with uh, an additional workbook. And our focus um, in today's presentation is going to be on uh, Principle 8 of the ASPA, um, the eight ASPA Principle Ethical um, Codes. All right, so just going to go through these quickly, as you can see in front of you. Number one, advance the public interest. Number two, uphold the Constitution and the law. And number three is promote democratic participation. Number four is strengthen social equality. Number five, fully inform and advise. Number six, demonstrate personal integrity. Number seven, promote ethical organizations. And number eight, which again, we'll be focusing on a little later in the presentation um, on some um, ways to improve on number eight, uh, advance professional excellence. And while discussing um, the ethical principles, it's important to also understand a little bit of the basics of the, the history. Um, Paul Appleby was an early ASPA president that developed the idea of democratic morality. Um, in addition to Paul's principles, all um, ASPA members should be familiar with some core, you know, early historical work on ethical ideas for public administrators. And Appleby's work specifically focused on advising public administrators on ethical code for working in a democracy. And his dem democratic morality can best be understood by the following five points. All right, number one. Um, the action conforms to the processes and symbols developed for the general protection of political freedoms and is the agent of more general freedoms. For example, um, not restricting um, voting rights. Number two, it leaves open the way for modification or reversal by public determination, uh, which would mean you know, not making laws that the courts never have the opportunity to reverse if they are morally and ethically uh, not fair. Number three, it is taken within a hierarchy of controls in which responsibility for the action may be readily identified by the public, um, which refers to a transparent legislative process where votes are made public. Number four, it embodies as contributions of leadership the concrete structuring of response to popularly felt needs. Um, for example, um, no lame duck measures passed by legislation that has recently um, going to lose its power in the, in the new year. Number five, it is not merely responsive to the private and personal needs of its leaders. For example, you don't fire the attorney general just because he doesn't share your personal views if you're the guy in charge in a democratic system. And um, I'm going to pass it on now to my colleague Erica to go in a little bit of uh, limitations for ASPA ethics code. All right, so I'm going to be going over three limitations to what the current ASPA code is along with the workbook. And the first one is the inability to inspire a lifelong professional development. ASPA stresses that it's the ultimate responsibility of applying standards and, or I'm sorry, the ultimate responsibility of applying standards and ethics falls upon the individual. But they don't stress that the true foundation of ethics um, begins at the personal level and is a lifelong evolution uh, that people have. So the code of ethics uh, as established by ASPA and by other organizations is merely a building block, block upon which um, someone's own personal professional ethical outlet could, could build upon. Uh, so the key here for ASPA is to focus on inspiring continuous curiosity or lifelong learning, continuous learning in their members, but also uh, inspiring them to have a receptivity to growth and having an open mind to new ideas um, rather than shutting out anything, uh, anything new at all. The second limitation I wanted to focus on was understanding the context in which you, you serve. So ASPA says uh, in their implementing code of ethics, a work, 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 failure to accept responsibility and do what is right is also an ethical shortcoming. Um, 
so they do stress acting competently, but it's really limited to having your educational background. Um, and it doesn't really build upon extending outside of the standard operating procedures. So a prime example of why this is important of acting within the context and being cognizant and aware um, of the context is the current dissolution of the administrative state at the federal level with uh, certain positions not being filled or people leaving their positions. Um, it ultimately becomes the responsibility of people who were lower in the hierarchy uh, to fill higher positions. So not knowing that somebody has left a post uh, leaves a huge gap. Um, and according to ASPA, it is the responsibility uh, of these individuals to take charge and to um, go ahead and, and start making actions and decisions because even inaction is a decision. Um, so recognizing the responsibility and also having the aptitude to take the action. So in order to work ethically um, in, in any organization, you must understand the global context of which you're operating, um, but also have that educational background and continue to learn um, your new responsibilities. The last limitation I wanna focus on before turning it over to my colleague Lisa is defining egocentric materialism. Um, so when we're talking about egocentric materialism, we're really looking at more of the micro level or the self and uh, whether one is motivated in their actions by egocentric tendencies or altruistic uh, tendencies. So egocentric is much more focused on the individual and on the self. Um, and this kind of works into how we defined earlier democratic morality um, and doing what's best for the public good. As a public administrator, it's really important to serve from an altruistic motivation. Every single day when you wake up, you should be going in to do your work um, in the interest of moving forward the public interest in the public good rather than moving forward on your own personal gain and wealth. Um, and in order to understand whether you're working out of an egocentric or an altruistic motivation, you really need to have an introspective reflection. Um, and while this isn't something that ASPA can demand, it's certainly something that they can inspire through curiosity and an open mind in their members to do. Uh, if we want to move forward with having at the macro level organizations that function in an altruistic way to serve the public, um, it's imperative that we have public administrators at the micro level who act in altruistic um, motivation. So with that, I will turn it over to Lisa, who is going to talk about our fourth limitation. So first, I'll give a brief overview. The first thing is that any individual that joins ASPA or chooses to join ASPA is making a commitment to serve the public interest by adhering to the code of ethics. The next thing is that given ASPA's national reach, members are able to join one of the over 30 regional chapters, um, as well as given the option to choose between over 30 topic-based sections. Um, this membership is being offered to individuals who classify identify themselves as students, public administrators, academics, or any other interested parties. The last thing is that ultimately, as Erica mentioned, it's ultimately the responsibility of the individual to adhere to the code. So ASPA is giving or providing various educational review resources um, to support the member's efforts, the majority of which are accessible online. Next. <clears throat> Next, sorry. Generally speaking, the ethics related resources that are being made available to the individual members fall into three major categories. Written documents such as the code, workbook, and assessment that Erica previously mentioned. Videos um, such as the ASPA ethics YouTube channel or the ones that will be found there. And then lastly, publications, which would include any ethics related articles members might be able to find in the public administration review journal. So in terms of what's available at the chapter level, the chapters, um, ASPA's regional chapters have an abbreviated ethics model 
ethics program model meant to educate its members on the key expectations that are relating to how they are meant to practice this commitment to ethical behavior. So this is a quick approach and it's referred to as using memes, um, which is when complex pieces of information are taken and turned into what are called distinctive memory units and they are easy to remember and easy to recall. Um, Given the speed of memes and or their ability to ability to induce learning, we believe that it would be beneficial if ASA was able to introduce and reinforce the idea of personal ethics and critical thinking in its members by using such memes. Further along the lines of using memes and other customized ethical education for its members, we propose a similar approach will be taken for those over 30 topics based sections ASPA offers its members. It's offering the members the opportunity to further their professional development. Unfortunately, the section membership are not included in the general, in ASPA's general membership fees, um, but are available as add-ons. So this payment structure, however, means that despite ethics being a topic that is relevant for all members, the benefits um, for the ethics-specific group or section um, such as journals, newsletters, discussion panels, workshops, et cetera, are only exclusively available to the section members. So this results in, mm. in a barrier being placed in between the members and the, the access, access to the, inf the resources they are trying to obtain in their journey to be more altruistic. Although we do believe that self-study practices have their place, we would argue that they do not offer members the same opportunities to be as inquisitive and actively seek out like-minded individuals to learn from um, as they would if they had access to the ethics section. We also believe that taking memes, okay, this is too long, sorry. Can we stop? memes and other customized educational, ethical educational means publicly available would greatly improve the comprehension and implementation of ASPA's core ethical principles, not only in means that members are able to access, but also in terms that members will be more likely and willing to engage. So if ASPA continues to focus its dispersal efforts on memes and other forms of communication that convey this core ethical principles, these core ethical principles, we believe that the entire organization will benefit which leads into our next section, which Brian will present the proposed programs. Okay, um, so with our analysis done above, um, we were tasked to come up with a few proposed programs for ASPA in order to promote ethics within its members. Uh, we just want to point out first that ASPA's Code of Ethics were last revised in 2013, and we believe that they could be revised to be applicable to an evolving public sector and um, likewise a political climate. Um, one of our first proposals is to include the following two principles into the code of ethics. Uh, first, being more aware of our, first being more aware of environmental context. Um, again, as the state of the public sector and the political climate continue to evolve and change, uh, we believe it's important for a code of ethics to adapt to those changes um, in order for the members to not let their own personal or political biases interfere with their own ethical practices. Uh, second is to increase democratic participation by further promoting transparency in the public sector. Um, for this, we highly suggest that ASPA put together additional roundtables and possibly seminars for public administrators to converge and to discuss strategies and action plans um, to improve transparency in their own organization. Uh, if we move to the next slide, uh, we also want to mention that we feel that ASPA's code of ethics is currently too holistic. Uh, and what we mean by that is it's a little bit too broad or general in a sense. Uh, we believe that it could be more individualized. Um, in this ethics course, we learned that uh, ethics training is about controlling the mind, uh, but the individual must learn to control their mind and create the habits they wish to have. Um, so we believe that self-development programs such as online webinars, videos, and discussion forums will provide ASPA members the necessary resources to uh, more effectively stimulate their own ethical mindsets. Um, okay, so to wrap, wrap this up here, um, ASPA, you know, on their website, they emphasize that the ultimate responsibility of applying standards and ethics falls upon the individual. And to that end, uh, we believe that the development of a personal ethic is an evolutionary process um, that occurs throughout an individual's lifespan. Um, and in order to advance professional ethics, uh, public administrators must have a working understanding of what constitutes their own ethics. 
Uh, also based on the idea of intersubjectivity, we can only assume that two or more people are looking at Ashby's Code of Ethics and sort of identifying it in the same manner. Um, so we believe that it is more effective to provide members outlets to discover their own meaning of ethics and be able to apply those to their own self-principles. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, again, we are group three.